So we've got Jay Ellis here, former student of ACP, uh, now a lecturer, but he's had an interesting transition between being a student and then transitioning to a lecture. And I thought he had an interesting story. So when you were a student here, Jay, what were you thinking? What was going through your mind? Yeah, um, tables have turned actually, because usually I'm the one asking you the questions. But um, what was going through my mind? Uh, I, I knew I wanted to be here. I knew that I wanted to work in sport. But if you were to ask me day one when I walked in, what did I want to do in sport? My answer was, I don't know, I think anything. So I love sport, I still do, but I, I wasn't very clear on what the options were because I didn't know, I wasn't exposed to that environment. Interesting, so when did you start your career? Because you did start as an intern at the Wanderers, didn't you? Yeah, so I, I was lucky to get an opportunity with, quite early on in my bachelor's degree actually with Western Sydney Wanderers. Um, and if I've been completely honest, I, I went in there a bit blind. I didn't really know what performance or tactical analysis was. Um, but like I said to you, I just wanted to get a start in the industry. So um, I took the opportunity uh, and I, I didn't actually even get it, to be fair. Uh, so a gentleman already had more experience than me that applied for this internship. Uh, but blonde hair, blue eyes, you're allowed to uh, act a bit silly sometimes. And I played a bit stupid and I called the guy. How'd you go? Did you find somebody? And uh, he said, yeah, Joe, I did. And, and he's far more experienced. Sorry about that. I said, no worries at all. And then just there and then I thought, but what about your junior teams? Like surely you might need somebody for that. Um, and they weren't really planning to have anybody at that stage. Um, but they, um, they turned around and said, yeah, actually, you know what? We're not gonna pay you and you're willing to do some work. So, so why not? Um, and I started with them and then within a month or two, I was actually promoted to the first team. And you were very lucky, it was a good culture, you had Nick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, Popper was the head coach at the time and um, he, he's, I learned so much from him. And I think that head coaches, if they're great, um, it's a fantastic place to be. Uh, if they're not, then it's um, yeah, it's a bit of a challenge. But I was very lucky with um, with Popper, and um, I learned from him, and not just him, but his assistant coaches, Hayden Fox and Andreas Kalaska. Um, they were great because they respected the fact that I was going above and beyond financially, not receiving anything, but going above and beyond to support and help them. So you were studying while you were doing your internship? Yeah, yeah, just like uh, all, the, all our students that are going to listen to this, I was doing uh, four units, full-time study load, um, and my internship, on the piece of paper, it said uh, 15 to 20 hours a week, but as a, as a high-performance manager, you know that if people love what they do, they, they dive in, so I went over a year uh, free, where it was anywhere from 50 to 70 hours in a week. Uh, some weeks, it, it was you know 15 or 20, but the other ones waited out, sort of thing. So that's one of the traps of being a strength conditioning coach. You get paid for 40 hours, <laughs> but you could be putting anywhere between 40 and 70 or 80 hours a week. Yeah, so quite interesting. So what happened after you'd, you'd finished with the Wanderers and then you completed your undergraduate year? Yeah, so uh, during that time with the Wanderers, I was um, off the back of working hard. I was recommended to the junior national teams as well. So using all those opportunities, fantastic, great. Love sport, finally understood kind of what I wanted to do, I guess. Um, still to this day, who really knows what they want to do, to be fair. But um, I, I used that and um, I then realised time was up for me because it was getting a little bit stale, almost, and I thought I need to challenge myself a little bit more here and um, finish my degree with ACP um, and was grateful for that as well, obviously being taught by uh, people, the same gentleman that gave me the opportunity here, uh, Dr Trevor Clark. So um, to, to work with him, uh, you know, was that next step that I wanted to take. And I, I learned, Boyley, very quick in sport that you align yourself with good people. Uh, and if you align yourself with good people, uh, then you're naturally going to be better at your job. Yes, <coughs> quite interesting. Well, on a personal note, I started at the, at the coalface in high performance sport and then had the degrees but never used it and then come into into yeah. uh, academia. So, same bloke, Trevor Clark, yeah. he mentored me into becoming a, a lecturer, and I'm uh, very thankful for him. So, you went on and did a postgraduate degree? Yeah, yeah, Masters in Sports Coaching. Um, so, once again, if we talk mentors, we talk mentoring, um, Trev has been phenomenal in that regard for both of us. Uh, but uh, Trev said to me, if, if you want to be great at what you do, knowledge is power. Um, and we looked at a few degrees and 
nothing really kind of sat with me because if I'm being honest and, and students will relate to this, the weight off your shoulders after three years of a bachelor's degree thinking I never have to submit an assessment again. Yeah. And this thing called turn it in, like see you later. Um, but it's, um, you then realise that there, there's so much to learn, there's so much out there to learn. and. Um, so I jumped on board online study with University of Queensland doing my um, Masters in Sports Coaching. Uh, and those guys have been great as well. Uh, they've been absolutely fantastic in their support. And because I love what I'm learning, the passion for me to want to do well is, is red hot. It's there. And, um, and I think when people get to that stage of their study, that's what's exciting. Yeah, I've got to say that Trev was good with what Jay back. Because Jay's really interested in learning still. And that's what you want to be as a coach. You want to keep learning. We stop learning, <clears throat> we stop being a coach. So if you had some advice to students, what advice would you give them? Uh, I think I could almost write a mini book on advice on mistakes that I've made. Um, students, are, they're going to make mistakes in the industry. Uh, internships aren't going to work. Um, they're, I think students are a little bit scared as well on having to get it right the first go. If, if I want to be a high performance manager, then I have to get it right. If I want to be a tactical or a football analyst, I have to do that straight away. I think you realise over time that there's so much time and it's the unique skills that you pick up along the way um, that are going to support you. If your next question to me was, Jay, where do you see yourself in two years time? My answer is I don't know. But I think that's what's exciting is that that next challenge is um, is the exciting part of, I know that whatever I'm gonna end up doing, I can take all these skills with me and use. So to answer your question, I think my advice for the students is just embrace every class, every subject. You're not gonna like all of them uh, and that's okay, but take what you can take out of all of them, put it in your backpack and then when you graduate, you've got a backpack full of knowledge and certainty in high performance sport is employment. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, sport's a scary one to, and I'm preaching to the converted, sport's a scary one to be a part of. Um, it's, we were just talking about this today, about it not being very stable. Um, but that's what we want to be a part of. That's, that's you know, if, you, if you're going to dive into it head first, do it. My advice is, bloody do it well. That's interesting, yeah, just on, on a, another personal note, I left a full-time job to go to a two-year contract. <laughs> and you keep asking me why, and I think you've just answered it for me. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what we want to do. Yeah, I think if you've, if you've got passion in, in what you do and, um, and you're, you're naturally a person that, that wants to be the best that you can be, then uh, I don't think you're going to have an issue in sport. And do I think that there's a lot of people in the industry that become somewhat sales reps uh, and, and sell what they're doing? Yeah, probably. But I've also realised that I'm just going to focus on what I do and, and the team that I work with around me. And I'm not going to worry if that person is um, throwing out false information and selling it, and, uh, because guess what? that's that's them. And I think when we focus on ourselves in our degree, um, we'd be a little bit selfish, but in a good way. Then um, then we can make those decisions where we leave that full time job for the two year contract. Great talking to you, Jay. Thanks very much for your time. No, I appreciate it. Till the next time. See you later, guys. Cheers.